Welcome back. It's still Wednesday, April 8th, 2015. This is still the morning edition. Thank you for staying with us. Our previous items spoke about the plight of the Roma people, but our next guest is a modern day nomad. I'd like to welcome to the studio Globetrotter travel writer and philanthropist Peleg Cohen. Good morning, Peleg. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, so you just recently returned uh, to Israel after a decade of traveling to 110 different countries? Yes. That's, that's amazing. Yes, but I'm only here for a visit. You're Some only here for a visit? Yes, one month visiting the family, doing Passover, uh -huh. and after that I'm hoping to fly to Kazakhstan. Okay, so we'll hear some more about your travels, but we're going to yes. see a, a clip from your video journal right here. Perfect. I prefer to collect memories rather than things. My bag is my home. I never had a real job. I never had a car. I never had a house. I never even went to university. My education, I got from the road. And my inspiration is from the people I meet. I'm amazed by the power of the global community. Through the internet, I met people on couchsurfing, I met friends, and I even created my own network. At the moment, thousands of people around the world are following Lonely Pelic Facebook page. Okay, so we, we just heard some more about you. I mean, I, I think what really sticks out to me uh, with, with the, your story is that it's just people, it's something that people would love to do with their lives. They just don't have the guts to do it. So what gave you the guts to travel and just go day by day? I think it's a big uh, thing in Israel to go travel after the army. You know, we, we all been to the army and we all go travel. And then I did it as well. I flew to Asia and I spent uh, three months and I ran out of money, but I didn't want to stop traveling. I love the people I met. I love everything I did. So I went to Australia with $80 in my pocket, walk a bit, lived like in a small room, saved some money, flew to New Zealand. And then I start to realize it's quite easy actually to do it, that you can just walk a bit along the way, stay with friends, hitchhike, uh, sleep in the beach, you know, on, in your tent on the beach. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, it's a price I'm willing to pay. I'm willing to walk a bit, I'm willing to stay with friends, I'm willing not to have my own stuff, I'm willing not to consume, right. and actually to enjoy the, the beautiful world we have and the people inside of it. And when you say you worked, I mean, is, is there an issue there, like, legally sometimes, uh, working in countries without a visa necessarily? I think this is what stops many yeah. people. What makes them go home is when they run out of money, mm -hmm. they just don't know how to move forward. Uh, I did it, the first time I did it was in 2005, so I think things was a bit differently. Mm -hmm. In the past couple of years, everything I did was legally. Like I worked as a hotel manager in South mm -hmm. Africa, and now I'm doing my lectures. This is how I actually I make my money and through my blog, through my photography. So you need to find a way. So in the beginning, maybe you need to do a bit of other stuff. That's not the the easiest things to find yeah. to do. But I really believe if you're doing what you love, uh, you're gonna find a way. So. I found a way and I'm sure everybody can find his own way. I'm not lecturing also on go and travel the world or do what you love. It doesn't matter what it is. Just go and do it and love it. And if you work hard enough, I really believe you're going to make money out of it. And you have over 20,000 likes on your Facebook page. How did you get that much traction? I think because I've been the first Israel that actually was on the road for so long. Like 10 years on the road is not something you see a lot. And then it just, you know, people like what I did. I was like, you know, hitchhiking through West Africa. I did a Trans-Siberian Railway. I did like, you know, a lot of stuff that people doesn't do. I came out with crazy photos and then people are like, wow, that's, that's cool. Like, I want to see what he's doing. I want to see why he's doing it. And I think this is why people are so attracted to it. And I, you know, I heard it in West Africa. You, you said that you almost died so many times. I mean, <laughs> why, why didn't that stop you just returning home? You, you kept going. Yes. Uh, not, I, I had malaria and typhoid oh together. Oh, my goodness. Yes, so that was really, really bad, actually. Yeah. Uh, I was in a hospital for a couple of days, like horrible hospital, mm -hmm. no treatment whatsoever, people dying around you all the time. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, I went through it, and uh, I decided I want to keep on going. Mm -hmm. You got the genuine experience. Now, now, all of your travels have really inspired you to work with people and, yes. and you know, work in the humanitarian field. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us about the work that you're doing now. So it all started, actually, from my 100 country, the Philippines. So I spoke with my mom on the phone, and she's like, I'm so proud of you. You know, you made your dream. It took you nine years to do it, but now you need to find a new dream. And I was like, yeah, you're right, I will, I will look for something. And then I went to the Bet Chabad in the Philippines, and I met three young guys that are the owner of Modani Furniture Company from, okay. from the U.S. In the U.S. company, uh-huh. And they're like, wow, it's really cool the way you live your life, but why you do it? I was like, because I like to travel and because I like to help people. You know, I stayed in, on the side of the road, I sleep on villages, and I take their photos, I share their stories, mm -hmm. and this is how I could help them. And they're like, that sounds really amazing. Maybe we're going to give you a big amount of money, and you can actually make project. You can actually help more. And was, just like that. Just like that. We're yeah, going like, to give you money. Yes, like they said, they want to donate money, but mm -hmm. they don't want to do it 
online, they don't give it to a big company that the money will go to salaries and corruption and whatever. Right. We're going to give it to you, and then we know 100% of the donation go to the kids. We know that the girl Jane, the money went to her. We, it's, a, it's much more personal for them also to donate this way. And I said, of course, that's amazing. And the same week, I moved into Smoky Mountain, mm -hmm. that it's a dump site in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, 2,000 kids, 700 family, no health care, no electricity, no water, nothing. There is a local organization called Young Focus that's working there. And actually, together with them, we start a pro two project for the kids there. And we I, think we're seeing, I think we're seeing clips yes. of this um, here on the screen. You, yes. can just, you can just see the situation there. Yeah, it's really, really bad. But beautiful people, really, I really enjoyed it. And I lived there for three weeks. And what we did actually was sponsoring meals for six months. Mm. And the meals they got in school. And to come to school, they have to shower. So we're getting their hygiene, their uh, food, and their education. And actually, we sponsored it for six months. And with this video clip that you're seeing, mm -hmm. the local organization, Young Focus, are actually still founding money around the world. So they don't need our help anymore. And then I went to Korea, and we helped there with the Jewish first Jewish restaurant, the kosher restaurant. Mm -hmm. In Japan, I was visiting prisoners in Ukraine during the war. I volunteered with the orphanage. And then together with the architecture from Berlin, mm -hmm. I just came back from Cameroon building a school. Wow. And you know, I want to get a little personal because you said you're, you had a conversation with your mother, and she's mm -hmm. so supportive. Yes. And it's interesting because parents in Israel tend to be very clingy. And they tend to, you know, okay, go after the army, travel, enjoy yourself, but come <coughs> home. So, so this isn't all, this isn't necessarily a, a, a normal situation. Your parents are incredibly supportive of you yes. being away most of the time. Have, that must not be easy for them. No, but I have the best family ever. Yeah. Like I have great parents. I have a supporting mom, twin sister, big sister. Everybody's like, as long as you are happy, we feel that you are happy. I'm behind you. Like my mom always said, like you know, obviously I want you here, but you're doing your thing. I'm proud of you. I'm here for you. Whatever you need. So, so what, what projects do you hope to, to fulfill in the future? Are there any other places that you've been that you've said, I want to help those people? I definitely want to go back to Smoky Mountain. Like, I feel I haven't done enough there, so I really want to go there. And then Kazakhstan, it's a place I want to go now in May. And next summer, I'm hoping to go to Central South America. When I was traveling there in 2007, I saw horrible things. Mm -hmm. Not horrible, but, you know, like very... Poverty. Yeah, exactly. And I really want to help them. So this is why I'm also now going and trying to find a new uh, sponsoring, that actually a new company that be willing to go into this adventure with me and donate some money and said, yes, we are behind you. And we want to also donate to the things you're doing around the world and try and make people come and volunteer with me. That's the important part, I think. So, so final question, Pelek. Yes. Do you think you'll ever settle down? I don't know. It's not an issue. For me, I want to be happy, and as long as I'm happy, I will do what I want to do. And what makes you happy is traveling and, and experiencing the world and helping people. Right now, yes. Well, thank you very much for being here. This was great. Thank you for having me.